This is United FM Radio. Project Arrowhead will be starting shortly. Please stand by. Project Arrowhead, we're back. I am your host, Jim Sackowitz, along with Glenn Swy, and somewhere off... I heard screaming. Me too. Somewhere off in the distance is Keith Buttmunch. <laughs> here, here, here you go. Here you go. You were starting already. You had, um, you had to take it on the air there, okay there? I had to take it on the air. Tough guy with sunglasses. I, um... I hate to start the show like this. It's becoming way too too often, too prevalent. But on behalf of Project Arrowhead, United FM Radio, and Arrowhead Paranormal, our hearts and uh, our prayers go out to the people of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A, uh, another another mass shooting people in church um, just there to do their worshiping or whatever it was they were doing and um, this whack job and that's what I'm gonna call him I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say his name I'm just gonna call him whack job walked in and randomly started shooting people and uh, unfortunately, this is now becoming the norm here in the United States. Last wing, last wing, last week, we had a radical right winger mailing out bombs to Democratic opponents. Um, then the other day, we have a left wing radical shooting up a church of innocent people what this goes to show is it's not a right wing it's not a left wing problem it's a humanity problem 
I'm I'm tired of hearing that it's up to our politicians to stop this violence. No, it's not up to the politicians to stop this violence. Because the politicians really don't give a rat's ass, to be be honest with you, whether it's right wing, left wing, the only ones who can stop this unnecessary violence is us. It's you. It's me. It's easy to, to sit there and blame this person and blame that person and, you know, well, this person needs to do something. Well, that person, no. You need to step up and do something. And I could go on, uh, the, the whole show I could go on about this because here we go with the uh, the gun the gun uh, laws again. Well, we need stiffer gun laws. No. No. We have good gun laws that there are. It's the nutcases who will find a way to inflict terror and pain, whether they have guns or not. The the left, the, the, the right-wing radical who was mailing bombs, he didn't have a gun. He inflicted terror. It's our problem people we are the ones that need to step up and do something about it if you sit back and you wait for your politicians to do something you're gonna wait forever and unfortunately more people are gonna die and it's not gonna stop it's up to us and I'm, I'm just gonna leave it at that and once again our thoughts and prayers go out to the the Jewish community, not only in Pittsburgh, but across the country, who were affected by this needless tragedy. Uh, we also want to keep the uh, Pittsburgh Police Department in our prayers. Several uh, Pittsburgh police officers were also shot during that incident, and um, we hope you have a speedy recovery, and uh, our prayers are with you. And I, that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that because I could go on a, I could go on an epic rant about it, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to let it get the best of me. And speaking of panic, absolute lose your mind panic. That happened 80 years ago today. Did you know that? What? <clears throat> that 80 years ago today the United States went into full blown panic people took up arms people ran and hid they got in their basements they were totally freaking out did you know that no I don't remember you weren't born yet no not yet they saw a I think they saw a poster of you Jim <laughs> no, I didn't. Did you hear? I didn't hear anything. <laughs> October thirtieth, nineteen thirty-eight. People were listening to the radio. Oh, I know what you're talking about. And huh? they heard of a Martian invasion. Keith, do you know what I'm talking about? It was Orson Welles, wasn't it? It was Orson Welles, correct, and he was broadcasting his story, War of the Worlds. And people believed it. And people, well, people who turned in late or or whatever, you know, they started listening to the radio, mm -hmm. and it was so well done that these people actually thought that we were having an alien invasion. Sarah, I don't know where it was broadcast from, but it was it was all over the country. People were losing their minds, and. Uh, you know, you think about it now, it's actually funny, but they didn't have TV back then. Nope. And the radio was, it, it was something new. You know, the, the radio's out, it's it's brand new, and people turned it on, they're used to hearing the news. So they turn the show on, <laughs> and they start hearing about these Martian invaders that are, are killing everybody, and telling everybody to run, and hide, and... And they believed it. <laughs> they absolutely believed it. I think they every were, police uh, 
police station in the country uh, was called. There, there was absolute insane. panic everywhere. <laughs> I mean, just just think about it. From a radio show. You know, that's it, amazing. And it was <clears throat> it, it was the first of its kind, and I think it was the last of its yeah. kind. I think <laughs> after that. They didn't do the, too much of that after. <laughs> it ended where the, the police finally called the radio station. And said, look, you guys, you got to tell everybody this is just a show. It's a program. It's not real. People are losing their minds. And I believe they finally did. They told everybody, look, hey, stop. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that was good. I remember that. Not. <laughs> so, yeah. So that was 80 years ago today. Wow. 80 years. And... That story, that that show, to this day, is still, it, it's still an epic story. Oh yeah, but I mean, it's still fun to listen to too. Yeah, if you listen to the original broadcast, I, I can actually see. Now, if you put yourself back in 1938, yep, kind of realize what's going on. People used to listen to the radio for news and this and that, and all of a sudden they turn the radio on and they hear of this, this alien invasion. And these things are coming from all over, and they're killing people, and, and people need to run and hide. Well, it actually sounded like a news broadcast, so they really yeah. believe that that's what it was, was the news. <laughs> they <laughs> flip it out. Yep. It, it, absolute panic. Nationwide panic from Orson Welles' War of the Worlds. And that was 80 years ago today. Happy anniversary. Uh, happy anniversary. <laughs> so, uh, once again, got to remind you that uh, Project Arrowhead is brought to you by the Mohegan Sun Big Three, Lansdowne Pub, Avalon Nightclub, and the Vista Lounge. Avalon Nightclub and Vista Lounge for VIP services. Contact Chris Cody, and he will take care of you. Lansdowne Pub. We have karaoke every Thursday night starting at 9.30 and live music every Saturday night at 10 o'clock. So come on down to the beautiful Mohegan Sun and visit one of the big three, Lansdowne Pub, Avalon Nightclub, and the Vista Lounge. So we had our, uh, we had our haunted history Friday night. At the Leffingwell House. At the Leffingwell House. And... We've done that a couple times now, but this last time, I was in awe. I was absolutely in awe. We know that there are several spirits in the house. We know who the spirits are, and we've interacted with them several times. Nothing major, but this last time... It was just absolutely incredible to watch. And uh, Sarah is listening right now. And um, Sarah would have to explain it better than I can because it was Sarah's group. And the interaction and communication was just unbelievable. <clears throat> I have never, in, in all the time we've been doing that, never seen the interaction between Hannah. And for those of you, the, uh, Sarah's going to call in a second, and we'll let you uh, hear straight from her on her experiences from Leffingwell. Uh, Hannah is a, I believe, 10, 10-year-old girl, or 8 years old. I don't know. She's young who passed away in the house back in the early 1800s from consumption or uh, otherwise known as tuberculosis. Um, Henry, who usually resides, we call it the basement, but it was called the summer kitchen. And, um, you know, they didn't have air conditioning back in the 1800s. And uh, Henry was a slave and they would cook down in the summer kitchen and where the Leffingwell house originally was, there was a tunnel underground. Uh, Henry was coming back from grocery shopping 
one day, well, I say grocery shopping, or shopping, and uh, he was murdered by a white woman just short of the Leffingwell house. And uh, Henry is another one of the permanent residents there. And uh, there's a lot more that are in there. The, the Leffingwell house is such a huge, huge, huge part of history, and most people don't even realize that. Uh, you had everybody at the Leffingwell house from from Chief Uncas to George Washington to Benedict Arnold, Sam Adams, obviously the, the, the Leffingwells, um, Thomas Jefferson, they were all at this, this house, this tavern and inn, and the history there is just absolutely incredible. And to make contact with these people is it, it's a blessing it's it's just absolutely amazing and uh, of course we were there arrowhead paranormal along with crossing the veil and uh snow and taylor and it was just it was a good time it was a good time we had a lot of people um broke them up into pretty even groups and uh, we had a good time we really did and like i said sarah is going to be calling in and uh, we'll let you hear straight from her mouth about the interactions that she had um, with Hannah. Hannah and Henry, but mostly from Hannah. I'm glad we get most of I think we got it on video. Somebody videotaped it or videotaped it. And I'm dating myself. Somebody recorded it on their phone. <laughs> You're dating yourself? I'm dating myself. I said videotaped it. Do they even have videotapes anymore? Yup. 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 Wow. <laughs> I want to give a shout out to Gina. I don't know if Gina's listening today. I hope she's doing better, and hopefully we'll have her back soon. Gina! Gina! And then we'll have our three-person team all over again. So, Glenn, what do you know about vampires? They suck. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> we have a call. Hello. Project Arrowhead, you're on the air. Hello, this is call. Sarah. Sarah, what's hey, up? How you doing? Sarah. Nothing. This is weird listening to it on this end. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was great to, uh, to weird finally meet to you. It this end, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was good meeting you guys as well. So how was your experience at the Leffingwell Inn? Um, like a roller coaster. It was just, like, I fully did not know what to expect. And, you know, you have to, like, go into it, like, a little bit skeptic, you know? Mm -hmm. And half my brain was, like, trying to rationalize everything. And then there was, like, a certain moment where I was like, you can't make that up. <laughs> so, um... I don't know, the the first part, um, like I told you, I fully went in there with, like, the intention. I was like, nothing better touch me. I don't want to be touched by a ghost or a spirit or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the night, I was just like, you can, you can hold my hand. You can touch my hand if you want. And I... It was like a 180. I wouldn't... I did, as I was asking it, I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's why, you know, when you first come in, we have our little spiel. Let me tell you that, um, first of all, who you're going to be dealing with. Um, most of the time, it's one of those four, but it could be it could be anybody. But we always make contact with Hannah and Henry, and I'm pretty sure that's who you were dealing with in the basement was Hannah and Henry. Yeah. And both of them seem to be fighting over your attention. Yeah, they wanted to, like, I mean, I think there was one more. Was, is Henry one? I think Henry was upstairs. And once Henry came in, Hannah was like, no. And then downstairs, it seemed like she wanted the attention, like, fully. So for us to say something, for us to tell people, you know, what we see, what we find, and this and that is one thing. 
but for them to hear it from somebody who's actually not affiliated with the group, who's come in and actually gone through and experienced what we talk about, why don't you fill everybody in on what exactly you went through? Um, <clears throat> so upstairs is the first room that we went to, and I was like, totally not knowing what to expect and I thought it was actually kind of cool that everyone just sat on the floor and we all just sat you guys turned the lights off um there was a flashlight on the table set up that no one was near um there was a spirit box and I don't know what that like weird green light thing was but it like put the lights all over the um the wall like stars or something Mm mm-hmm and Laser that was the meter that was like green and then red if it was like right there. I don't know what that's called either. The the meter was a um, K two a K two meter which measures electromagnetic. Here we go again. And I had the same problem the other night. <laughs> electromagnetic fields in the room, which uh, the green okay. light is also it's a laser grid that pretty much does the same thing. Oh okay. Um so. Um, and I'm horrible with names. So someone was holding the spirit box right across from me in the little circle. Brittany. Okay. And then, so she was asking a questions and then she finally was like, Hey, this is your investigation. You guys can ask questions. And every time, or for the most part, every time somebody asked a question, some spirit would respond pretty much yes or no with the flashlight. Like, So it would turn on and turn off. And then so, like, my brain was just like, you know, you could manipulate that somehow. And then, like, this is just my thought process at the moment. So I'm like, okay. But then it was, like, responding, like, perfectly to questions. So then I was like, which, how would they do that? Mm -hmm. And then um, just as we were about to go, something touched the right, my, I was sitting, like, um, cross-legged, and something hit my right, like, just above my right knee, like, on my thigh. Mm -hmm. And I looked up, and my mom was sitting in the chair next to me, and there was nothing there that would have touched me, and I was like, that was really weird. And I kind of was just like, what was that? I don't know. But I do know that they said that Hannah likes to play, like, tug on your shirt, pull on your hair, something like that. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and then when we got down to the basement, um, well, hold on, Bef- like- before you get to the basement, um, yeah. talking about that light, um, just so everybody knows, and, and you can verify this, the flashlight is just your basic run of the mill, mini mag light. There's mm-hmm. no trickery with it. It's, it was, it's an actual flashlight, right? Right. And what happens is they use their energy to turn the light on and off. So if you asked it a direct yes or no question, like, Hannah, is that you? If that's you, turn the light on. And boom, the light would come on. There there was absolutely no way to fake that. Right. And it was was really... um... And, like, no one was even near it either. It was, like, sitting on a table. Um, It didn't move. It was behind everyone. So no one one touched it. And while the lights were off, like, you you could still see within the room. So you Mm -hmm. would be able to tell if someone was moving. So um, then, like, my thought process, just heading downstairs, just what just touched me? What was that? What was that? (laughs) And then I was like, well, that wasn't bad, I guess. Like, did you know, like, the movies play everything up, like, yeah. you know, ten times worse, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so then when we got downstairs, um, it was quiet, and it seemed like William, or Henry, Henry. whoever was downstairs, Henry. Henry. Um, it seemed like he didn't really want to um, communicate. And I get it was a group mostly of women, so it seemed like he doesn't like women. 
And so I think Hannah was just like, well, I'm going to take this opportunity to steal the show. And my friend Patrick was sitting next to me. He was holding that K2 meter thing. Mm -hmm. And he was, like, so pumped about this whole experience. He was, like, asking her to touch her, everything like that. (laughs) I noticed that. And he, so I guess she touched her, like, down the side of his hand. And he was like, he was like, no way. So he was like, do it again, do it again. So then she touched her again. And I was like, what? I, well, I wanted on this. I was like, okay, if you want to hold my hand, I'd be down for that. You can hold my hand. And I swear, in my mind, everything up until that point, I was like skeptic. And then I felt the most ice cold, like feeling cut, like cut my hand, like someone was holding my hand. And I was just like, that was the point. I was like, you can't make that up. There's no way. And that's when you guys all got goosebumps, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I had goosebumps before because we kind of, within the small group, we formed a little, another small group on the floor circling. And it seemed like Hannah was in her glory, like standing or sitting in the middle of us. Mm -hmm. So if I had my hands out in front of me and I moved, my left hand out like a foot you could just tell the difference in temperature of where she was and where she wasn't Mm -hmm. so then even though she was there and i knew knew she was there when she cupped my hand it was like a hundred times colder and i don't know that just blew my mind and of course i had goosebumps i'm like no way like i'm a believer like i kind of already believed in this stuff but there was, like, that rational part of me that was like, nope, nope, and then it happened. And then when you guys started talking with them on the spirit box, I can't... Oh, re- yeah, it said my name. I can't recall ever, ever getting that much activity on the spirit box as you guys were getting. It was just, it was unbelievable. Yeah, um, my only difference was, try- like, for... When everyone was asking questions, like, everyone was kind of asking really quickly instead of, like, waiting for the answer. Yep. And then um, I couldn't tell which one was communicating. But you guys could because you guys obviously have picked up on that. It's one thing that I tried to explain to everybody. Just because it's a male or a female voice coming through the box doesn't necessarily mean it's a male or female talking to you what it does right i got that yeah it manipulates the radio waves so whatever is on there that's what's going to come through and um it was hard to decipher sometimes but it seemed like for the most part you were talking to hannah i think so too yeah but there was like times when um the other girl i don't even know her name she was like, oh, that was him. That was her. She, like, just knew. Oh, Alexa? Alexis? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Alexis. Was she the younger one? Yeah, she works at the house, and um, she's with them all the time, so she could tell you in a heartbeat who's who. Okay, so, yeah, she would know. <laughs> and the group before you, we had, we had a girl whose name was Hannah, and Uh-oh. <laughs> that was absolutely... I mean, I thought that was exciting. You know, the, the Hannah loved it, having somebody else in there with, with the name Hannah. And uh, But st- that, that whole thing paled in comparison to when you guys were in there. Well, what blew my mind was, like, I wasn't sure I wanted anything to, like, talk to me or say my name. And my mom was like, this is my little girl. Do you know her name? And she just, I was like, oh, my God, you threw me under the bus. And what does it do? It says Sarah in the spirit box. I'm like, uh, geez. <laughs> And it wasn't just it wasn't just a quiet like Sarah. It was Sarah. Just like that. It yeah. was loud and clear and my jaw hit the floor, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like it was in my hand and I was just like, Nope, oh, you can take it. Somebody take it. This is too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and if I remember it said a couple people's names, didn't it? Yeah, it said a couple people's names, but I didn't I only knew the like my mom, Sam and Patrick that I went with, but I didn't mm-hmm. know anyone else really in the group, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> and then uh, I forgot why Henry got all mad, but he, he opened the door up behind me. 
Yeah, I didn't <laughs> yeah. see that. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember what. I think it was because Hannah was playing with you, and you guys were talking to Hannah or something. And then all of a sudden, we heard that noise, and the freaking door goes flying open behind me. Yeah, I heard it, but I didn't. I didn't get to see it because I was over in the corner. Um, and I mean, you know what? He wasn't really talking that much, so he can't get mad. <laughs> scared the hell out of me. It was literally, right behind me. And everybody. So heard what the- happened with the first group? Because we heard that they got kicked out of the basement, and I didn't really get to know why. Were it like, did they just like say, "Please get out," or like? You know what? I have no idea. Oh, okay. Because they said that when we were, like, sitting in that room waiting to start. Yep. They are like, oh, well, the last group got kicked out of the basement. I was like, what? So I was glad we didn't start in the basement. <laughs> it's, you know what? It's very possible if, um, especially with Henry, if he wants you to leave, you'll know it. He, he has... So what does he do? Does he say it or does he, do, like, slam doors? Like... How do you know? Oh, he'll say it. He'll, he'll, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he'll say it. Usually it's a leave. You know what I was really worried about? What's that? So I had, like, all these, like, I had all these, like, things in my head about, like, before I even, like, stepped foot there. And I was like, I know that they probably <laughs> wouldn't bring us to a place that had demonic spirits. But, yeah, no. especially with reading this book, um, what if, like, they, like, somebody brought a spirit with them? And I was like, I'm not down for bringing home a spirit that someone brings here. Like, anyone in the group, I mean. hmm I was worried about that. We would have picked up on that. They would have been, they would have been so, so many different things that happened. We, we would have picked up on it right away. Well, that's good to know. Oh, yeah. I mean, Hannah would have picked up on it right away, and she would have warned everybody. So now, speaking of demons, you finished yeah. You finished the book. Yeah. What did you think? I loved it. <laughs> I was just like, I think it was even cooler because I knew the not exactly, but I knew the places they were talking about. Like, I think I've... They mentioned, um, I think it's the Blue Colony Diner. I'm pretty sure I've been there a couple times. So it was cool that you could relate, like, knowing it was so close. It hits close to home. Mm-hmm. In the Union Cemetery. Yeah. Um, I think... If, you know what? Props to that family, because the second any of that stuff went down... I'd be out quick, fast, in a hurry. You'd never see me again. No way. Yeah, but you know what? It, it, it doesn't matter where you went. It would have followed you. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> it so seems you like could have left the house. It, like, but... The same thing with, like, the Ouija board. Like, that freaked me out. Like, how it, like, transferred from, like, one place to the next. And I'm mm-hmm. like, no. <laughs> it's... Thankfully, like. I played with a Ouija board when I was younger. Yeah, yeah, knowing. you told me that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know any better. I was probably like 10 or 11. You get it as a Christmas gift. What are you supposed to do with it? <laughs> what kind of negative um, effects did you have from playing with the Ouija board? I don't think I had any. And it's, I don't know if I <clears throat> used it right. I don't know. I We read something, and mind you, this is like 10, 12 years old. We read something about always say goodbye so that it, like, closes it or something. And this could just be a myth. I don't know. But um, we made sure to say goodbye. Um, we were nice. And I don't even know if my friends were, you know, messing around or not. But I don't think we got anything, to be honest. And I this was years and years ago. And I can't say that I've had any negative um impact from that so did not (laughs) excuse me did anybody warn you prior to using it no not at all like i think the box just had must be this age to use or something like that like no one under three i don't know 
No one under three mm-hmm. summons demons. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, I mean, I didn't know that was such a thing. And um, had I known, like, like if I ever see anyone using one, I would be like, absolutely not. And, like, I knew this afterwards because I had told um, a friend's mom that we were playing with it, and she got super serious. Mm-hmm. And she was like, absolutely not. And she had an experience, and it her telling me her experience freaked me out hmm. and I never would use one again. My kids won't ever use one. I don't have kids, but when I have kids, they won't ever use them. And I, I just would discourage it from everyone. I don't, I don't want anyone to use one. Now, what was your favorite part of the book? Um, hmm. I, well, this night, like, I don't know, because I don't know if it gives anything away, but how it took over some people mm-hmm. and made them act certain ways um, was very interesting. I didn't ex- I didn't expect the possession. I don't know if that gives it away. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, it, it, it's in, the, uh, in the, the previews and everything. I like the, uh, the breakdown, chapter-to-chapter chapter breakdown at the end um so i didn't actually read the chapter chapter breakdown yet because i wanted my mom to start reading it and then i was going <laughs> to read it afterwards <laughs> really no i'm i fully was planning on reading it um what was the other thing and then you know what was very interesting What's that? <clears throat> the whole um what happens like literally the first couple pages how it all started was what blew my mind and then the ending I think was really nice right At how it ties back to the beginning uh, Snow said that she hopes her advice helped you oh my gosh yeah so I, I looked um, I have to get some tiger dye and black obsidian that's gonna that's on my list of things to do Outstanding. and I really hope it does too because let me tell you it's, it's, you know, it's not something I really, like, tell people, and mm-hmm. it's because I think people will think I'm, like, strange or something, but <clears throat> it is extremely, extremely, extremely exhausting taking on everybody's uh, emotions. Mm-hmm. It is so imagine. exhausting. Well, Snow's the person to talk to. Um, I don't know if you friended her on Facebook yet or not. Uh, yep, I did but, that night. Oh, outstanding. And then I joined um, a group. I think it's her group. Crossing the Veil? I think so, yeah. Yep. So I'm going to do some more research into that because, honestly, I didn't really know that was a thing. <laughs> What's that? Um, I, an empath? I didn't really know um, that was a thing. Mm-hmm. Or, like, I don't know. I guess maybe I just thought, oh, hey, you just, you're extra sensitive and you can pick up on people's emotions. But, you know, mm-hmm. when it gets to, like, like certain things like it, it could be good like at a wedding it's so great and beautiful and then did you go funeral, to a funeral <laughs> just, ugh, i just don't know how to describe it like the best way i can describe it is if every single person in that room was sitting on me and it's so heavy yep. and i can't breathe and my grandma just passed away um two months ago oh i'm sorry and to hear that. i um, I had to just, I had to go outside and sit in the car. And even then I could feel it, but not as much. But I, I just had to sit in the car for, like, the whole, like, viewing part. hmm And then the actual, like, service. Yep. Oh, that was, that was, like, unlike anything else. Because I always skip that. And then I actually went to it. And this time it was, that was the worst experience of my life with this whole thing, I guess. Wow. No, I'm sorry to hear about your grandmother. Oh, thank you. That's actually, um, Snow says meditation. Yeah, I have to do that. <clears throat> I actually tried this Calm app um, a little while ago, and then I stopped doing it. So mm-hmm. my dad's really into meditation, um, so I'll ask his advice on that. Oh, there you go. Yeah, my yeah, um, super, 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 like, just 
Friday was just like such a good day. Or so I should say good night. I was like looking forward to it the whole time. And yeah, I know. In my I mind. Know. <laughs> I don't know who was looking forward to it more, you or your mom. I know. I know. She, I think she was more, she was like more vocal throughout it all. Mm-hmm. But I think, I think I was wanting more out of it, like internally than I was like expressing. I was super quiet because like all, like, everything inside my brain was going so it was like super quiet that's why i didn't say hi at first because i was like i'm just gonna do that all afterwards <laughs> Dude, well i'm glad your mom came up and said hi to me i was like well, where's sarah she's all right there i'm like oh well yeah thanks for laying hi <laughs> yeah she she introduced herself as sarah beer's mom not not susan yeah sarah yeah mom. <laughs> oh sarah's mom <laughs> So oh, great. I'm guessing you would recommend that for anybody that uh, wanted to uh, partake in a paranormal investigation. Absolutely, especially if you were like on the edge. And also, like I, I consider myself a Christ follower. I don't want to like put that as like a certain religion, I guess. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> you have the, these. I don't know. You're not supposed to believe in like certain things because it's against your religion or something like that so like there's like a little part of me that was like a little like fearsome but then like you brought up you know if you believe in god then you believe in the devil so then those things have to be real and i i don't know there was a whole there was like a whole like morals line there too but if you were like a skeptic like on the fence mm-hmm. and you just kind of needed that push to like really like make you believe like you know molder i want to believe um they <laughs> that that was like that was it that was the place to do it sarah say hi to gina hi gina gina's making fun of me because i'm not wearing a hat <laughs> <laughs> Well, I am, I am, I am so glad that uh, you had a good time and you got to experience what you experienced. Um, it, it was definitely an experience for us because we, like I said, we've never ever seen that kind of interaction between the spirits in the Leffingwell house and somebody that we've brought in. And to be a part of that and to sit there and watch that was it was a treat for us. It, it really was. So hopefully. Um, we should be having one, I believe, this summer, and uh, hopefully you come back. Oh, I will absolutely come back. Like, I think $30 was a steal. Like, that was, like, <laughs> an opportunity of a lifetime, and I literally presented that to my mom. I was like, Mom, you want to do this thing? It's only $30. <laughs> yeah, well, remember, we're, we're, not, uh, we're not in it to make a fortune. We, Which uh, I think is such a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we raise proceeds for the Leffingwell House, you know, for the restoration and everything. Um, we just want people to experience what we experience. And it's the same thing. When we go out to a home to uh, to investigate a home or remove something from a home, we don't charge anybody. And you know what? I, I read that in the book, too. And I was like, wow, that's so nice. Because, like, you think about, like, this one experience and other people's experiences, they're like terrified beyond belief. And mm-hmm. just to have somebody like do that and not even have to think about money. Cause I'm sure, I'm sure at that moment people would be willing to pay whatever. And it's good that people don't take advantage of that. And I think that's really nice. Yeah. It's, um, it's a service that we do. Um, it, we, we all love doing it and, uh, we do it to make sure people are safe, people are protected, and uh, we don't we don't charge for it at all. Well, I think next time you come, I think we'll just focus a camera on you. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was incredible. I mean, Glenn's been there with us when we've done these investigations over there before, and. Um, I can't even describe to him what we saw because it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. I really I really want to do it again, but I like I would do it more with like a smaller group of people. Like or I should say I would prefer it. Like it was still a good experience and I was in the smaller group, 
of the two groups that went that night. Wow. No, Gina, we don't charge anybody, so... Yeah, we'll we'll talk about that one later. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the I don't know if you can see the, the comments that Gina's posting, but uh... no, because I'm on my phone, so if I I don't think I can watch it and talk on my phone at the same time. Yeah, Glenn can back me up here. We we don't charge people for for our investigations. Nope, not at all. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sarah, thanks for calling in. You're and welcome. I will watch the rest of the show via Facebook. <laughs> awesome. Again, thank you so much. And um, I, I can't wait till next time. Hopefully, Hannah interacts with you as much as she did this past time because it really was a treat to watch. Yeah, that was awesome. I would totally come back for Hannah. Excellent. All right, Sarah, thank you for calling. All right, guys. Have a good night. Take care. You too, sir. Bye. Bye. That was Sarah Beer. And that's the greatest last name ever. <laughs> and um, it, it really was just absolutely incredible to see what we saw and watch her, um, the, the four of them, the four of them. They sat in a circle in the basement, and you could see all this. The meters were going nuts. The, uh, the flashlight was going crazy. And the spirit box, they, it was a full-fledged conversation with Hannah. It was unbelievable. Could you explain the thing with the flashlight? All right. Basically, what we do is we take a flashlight, which is a, a mini mag light. Yep. And we turn it to where um, you don't have to push the button to turn it on. Because these spirits don't have the energy to push the button so what they do is when they they use their energy on the light the light will come on same thing with turning the light off okay and you, do you have this on film yeah oh uh, we're gonna have to show it next show we do have it on film and um you have to ask obviously a direct question because you're not going to get an answer any other way. So if you were to say, Hannah, are you here in the room with us? Turn the light on. And the light comes right on. You pretty much know Hannah's in the room with you. Then you'll come back with something like, Hannah, just to verify, you're in the room with us. Make the light go off. Boom, light goes off. So um, that's, we, we, that's sh insane. we show everybody ahead of time. It's uh, just a regular mini mag light. No tricks. Um, it's nothing, just a regular light. And by asking the direct questions and having everybody away from the light so that, you know, nobody's touching it, nobody can manipulate it in any way, and asking verifying questions and having the light react to every question you ask, it's pretty intense. If anyone wants to call into the show, the studio line is 860-626-5193. 860-626-5193. But wait, there's more. And if you want to call, the studio line is 860-626-5193. 860-626-5193. Is there call, an echo in here? Call yeah. now and ship it is free. Gina was making fun of me because I don't have a hat on. <laughs> Gina, believe it or not, I did have a hat on, but it's got green in it. And it was interfering with the green screen, so I had to take it off. Put the hat on, for everybody. You have a spark. You have a, you have a magical sparkling hat. Yeah, sure. It's not gonna do it now. <laughs> no, it's doing it. Not as bad, but it's doing it. It's a magical hat. <laughs> hey there, sparkly. He's just full of sparkles. Speaking of sparkly, let's talk about vampires. They suck. So and they're not sparkly. <laughs> if anybody says that freaking, uh, what's that damn show? With the sparkly vampires? Team Edward or Team... Uh, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I tend to forget it because it's not a real vampire movie. I forgot the name of it. <laughs> Good. Everybody should forget the name. All right, that's the end of that one. 
Okay, I got a little story about vampires for you. Now, oh, thanks, no. What'd you date? One? Twilight. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I was purposely trying to forget that movie. Twilight. And, and Al Gina. Thanks. Okay. Sparkly. I got a. I got a little story here. All right, give me your story. All right. The first vampires do not go back to Bram Stoker and his story about Dracula, or even Vlad the Impaler. They actually go back to Greek mythology. Yep. First vampire can be traced to Greek mythology and the story of a young Italian man who would have been Roman back then, named Ambrosio, and love of his life, Selina. The story includes many features of mainstream vampire tales, such as passion, blood-sucking, and extreme sun sensitivity. According to the myth, Ambrosio fell in love with Selena after visiting the legendary oracle in the Temple of Apollo, the sun god. He asked her to marry him, but little did he know the jealous Apollo wanted her for his own. Apollo cursed Ambrosio by causing his skin to burn whenever it was exposed to sunlight. In desperation, Ambrosio turned to Hades, the god of the underworld, and then Artemis, the goddess of the hunt, for help. After stealing Artemis' silver bow to fulfill a deal made with Hades, Artemis cursed Ambrosio so silver would burn his skin. So later, she later took pity on him, though and gave him super strength immortality and fangs to kill beasts to use their blood to write love poems to selena it's kind of an odd way to write a love poem <laughs> i would rather I'd just use a pen yeah i mean you know me. they must have had something to write with back then eventually the mortal selena escaped apollo's grasp and reunited with the immortal ambrosio Artemis told Ambrosio he could make Selena immortal by drinking her blood, which would kill her body and make her spirit live on. Their combined blood can then turn people who drank it into vampires. So that's actually the origin of vampires. So you're talking about thousands of years, way before Vlad. Which leads me to the next thing. Dracula. Twilight? <laughs> no. Dracula, or Dracul, was indeed a real person. Yep. Vlad the Impaler. Was he a vampire? No. No. He did cut the heads off of his enemies and stick them on a post. I think of a couple of people I'd like to do that too right now, but... <laughs> You're one of them. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> I knew that to get him. Um, What's what'd you say? I shut off your microphone. Do vampires exist today? Yes. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. You know how I know that? Because I'm a werewolf, and I, you know, hang around with some vampires. So they're not what you think, though. They're not the turn into a bat fangs. Well, they do have fangs, but they're yeah, like homemade. They're homemade. Um, Fake artificial teeth. There is a cult that have vampiristic tendencies. They drink blood. They live the life of a vampire, um, complete with fangs. Like I said, they either buy them or make them themselves. Some people file their, their uh, what are those teeth called? The incisors, canines? Canine. Incisors. Thanks. They file them down to look like fangs. Um, do you know what the... Vampire capital of New England was? What? Plainfield. Are you serious? Plainfield, mm -hmm. Connecticut. Jewett City, Plainfield? Yep. So that's what, so all the freaks in Connecticut are in, in Plainfield and Jewett City? They were. I don't know. I, I, I know, like to see I know there's one here chick. in New London. <laughs> Those vampire chicks are pretty hot. Snow also says that something very real are energy vampires. And what they do is they drain your energy. That's true. And that is absolutely true. So everybody everybody thinks of vampires as these mythical characters that turn into bats and come down at night and turn into a human form. 
And that was my ex-wife, an energy vampire. <laughs> Sucked the life out of me, I tell you. Wow. Yeah. You sure it was all her fault? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I got nothing on that one. All right. I'm going to stay <laughs> Moving on. the whole sucking topic. Yeah, that sucked. <laughs> I get it. Wah, wah. <laughs> I got you. Wah, wah. All right. Wah, wah, wah. You're going to make my go angry. On the, on the website, Damned Connecticut. Damn it. We will talk about the Jewett City Vampires. Now, when people think of early New England, one of the many things that comes to mind... What the hell was that? <laughs> he told you to made my go angry. That was crazy. One of the many things that comes to mind are the infamous witch trials of the late 17th century. Connecticut was actually quite an active participant with more than 40 people tried as witches, and at least 10 of them were executed. Now, this is, we're not talking Salem. We're talking here in Connecticut. It was actually more than that. Well, it was more than 50 tried, but at least 10 of them were executed. <laughs> Freak. This is, this is Jim when he wakes up in the morning, everybody. Hold on a minute. Let's see if you can see that. <laughs> That's his muzzle wife. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you see Keith's picture on a milk carton, you'll know why. Yeah. All right, anyway, as the actions of those early residents indicate, um, during a dark time in our state's history, belief in and fear of the supernatural was quite strong. Um, not only were there witches with a source, were a source of concern, but so was the devil himself evidence by no less than 34 places here in Connecticut named in his honor did you know that there are 34 places here in Connecticut that are named after the devil uh, the general sense of apprehension apprehension in regard to the supernatural was so deep rooted and powerful that nearly 200 years after the last supposed witch was hanged people were still paranoid and somewhat ignorant enough to believe that the state could be besieged by vampires besieged run over overtaken by vampires in this fertile breeding ground of fear during the 1800s 1854 were the renowned tales of the Jewett City Vampire. Z, plural. Um, as, as Dracula it wouldn't even be published for another 40 years, Dracula wasn't published till 1897, mm -hmm. the type of parasitic entities that Connecticut residents thought existed were not the debonair, romantic, twilight, bloodsuckers of fiction. Uh, far from... Vlad, Edward, Lestat. Oh, I like Lestat. I thought Lestat was a pretty cool vampire. The vampires of the mid-19th century were thought to be the undead arisen zombie-like from the grave to find nourishment in the blood of family members. Um, I don't see a problem with that. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't see like a problem. In this particular case, the family was the Rays of Jewett City, who over the course of nine years lost multiple family members to consumption. Um, that is now known as tuberculosis. People here us talk about consumption. Um, that is tuberculosis. The first to die from the mysterious disease was 24-year-old Lemuel, Lemuel in 1845. Less than four years later, Henry Ray, the patriarch of the family, died of the same disease. He was followed to the grave in the same manner by 26-year-old son Alicia, not Elijah, Alicia, only two years after that. Three short years later, 1854, the oldest son Henry 
became stricken with the now all too familiar symptoms. And that's when when the people of Jewett City lost their shit. Does it say that like that? <laughs> to say what? Lost their shit. Honestly, they lost, the, they, they lost their minds. Panic set in. People went nuts. Kind of like the War of the Worlds. Yeah. Before radio. <laughs> so now they're convinced that they were dealing with something well beyond normal disease. The family somehow decided that the untimely demise were being caused by their dead relatives rising from the grave during the night and returning to feast on the blood of the living. So they needed to do something and do something quick. You know what they did? What did they do? Now, this is documented. This is all, all proven. Mm -hmm. So according to the newspaper of the time, it was with the pure intent of protecting the living that the decomposing bodies of Lemuel and Alicia were dug up and burned immediately. Although it appeared that the body of Joseph Sr. was spared, it was believed the incendiary, the incendiary action did the trick. History does not record a specific date for Henry's demise, so it's thought that he survived his affliction. Interestingly, evidence was discovered in the 1990s that there have been other earlier vampires outside of the Ray family. In neighboring Hopeville, which is right next to Griswold slash Jewett City, 29 graves were unearthed. 29. An unmarked cemetery of the Walton family, who had lived only two miles from the Ray's farm about 50 years earlier in the early 18th century. The uh, Waltons? You mean the, John Boy was a those, vampire? Not those Waltons. I knew that was coming. <laughs> Good night, John Boy. <laughs> Upon archaeological exhumation, it was determined that one of the bodies, which had been decimated by consumption, apparently had been dug up after it was buried had its head removed, what was left of the skeleton was face down, its femur bones crossed over the chest, and a stake through the heart. Mm -hmm. Other Walton family members also evidently died from tuberculosis slash consumption slash nasty death. Up there on Walton's Mountain. <sighs> It's only speculation, but it seems as though when consumption started ravaging the rays, someone probably had recalled the similar, similar, similar situation that had befallen the Waltons decade before. Taking cues from how the Waltons had stopped their vampire epidemic, the same type of tried and true preventative action, i.e., rekill the dead, may have been employed by the rays. It seems as though. There were other cases throughout New England where this kind of action had occurred. Um, it's chronicled in Michael Bell's Food for the Dead on the Trail of New England's Vampires, which is a, a very good book. Um, it may seem extreme, and in retrospect, we know it, it wasn't necessary, but making extra sure the dead stayed dead made everybody feel better and that is how Connecticut's vampires got their story okay I got a quick one for you a neighboring Rhode Island Mercy Brown you've heard of her haven't you Legendary. Mercy Brown yeah Mercy Brown Mercy Brown it, uh, Dave actually went up and took a picture of the grave yeah that's right May rival Count Dracula as the most notorious vampire. Unlike Count Dracula, however, Mercy was a real person. She lived in Exeter, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. and was the daughter of George Brown, a farmer. After George lost many family members, including Mercy in the late 1800s to tuberculosis, his community used Mercy as a... Well, so here, <laughs> tuberculosis. Yeah, I know. To cut to the chase, it's tuberculosis. His community used Mercy as a scapegoat to explain their deaths. It was common at the time to blame several deaths in one family on the undead. 
The bodies of each dead family member were often exhumed and searched for signs of vampirism. When Mercy's body was exhumed, it didn't display severe decay. Not surprising since her body was placed in an above-ground vault during the New England winter. The townspeople accused her of being a vampire and making her family sick from her icy grave. They cut out her heart, burned it, then fed the ashes to her sick brother. Perhaps not surprisingly, he died shortly after. You think? Yep. And that's that story. And I gotta—I I agree with what something that Snow just said. Um, the bodies being dis, disrespected the way they were. Um, their spirit probably hasn't moved on. Oh yeah, that's true. And they're probably pissed off, and uh, they weren't—they weren't laid to rest permanently. They were basically taken apart, for the most part. And you know what? You can actually go to Jewett City and see these vampire, well, the vampire cemetery or graves they were talking about. Yep. Like you said with Mercy Brown at Exeter, you can yep. go there too. The Jewett City Cemetery, it's at the end of Anthony Street, which is right by uh, right by downtown Jewett City. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully somebody went in and uh, helped... Help these spirits rest. Um, I agree. Snow says, let's go. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, I'm hoping that somebody undid what these people did. Um, Well, that, that fear of vampires lasted a very long time. Oh, yeah. So I, I don't believe it was any time soon that they had tried to right their wrongs. But uh, people, I mean, even up into the, wasn't it the early 1900s or mid, or the earlier part of the 1900s, mm-hmm. uh, they were burying people with bells, strings down to the grave, because they either thought they were vampires or sometimes they buried them when they weren't even dead. So it's crazy times back then, but the superstitions that came from England with, that came over to the New World, uh, they were pretty far out. What's your favorite vampire story? Mm, I like Dracula. Yeah, that's got to be the... I mean, yeah, story that's, wise. That's pretty much the original as far as. Uh, I mean, so many ple- people have played Dracula. You know? Bella Lugosi. Yep, Bella Lugosi. I never drink. He was even buried in his Dracula Wide. outfit. Yeah, I know. That's, yeah, isn't that, that is something? So cool. Full makeup, everything. Yep. He was actually buried like that. I wonder if they put a stake through his heart. <laughs> To make sure. Really? Maybe. Really? Uh, I... Like you were saying before about modern-day vampires. Mm Mm-hmm. It says, although modern science has silenced the vampire fears of the past, people who call themselves vampires do exist. They're normal-seeming people who drink small amounts of blood in a perhaps misguided effort to stay healthy. This community of self-identified vampires can be found on the internet and in cities and towns around the world. To avoid rekindling vampire superstitions, most modern vampires keep to themselves and typically conduct their feeding rituals, which include drinking of blood of willing donors in private. Some vampires don't ingest human blood, but claim to feed off the energy of others, like Snow was saying. Mm-hmm. Energy vampires. Many state that if they don't feed regularly, they become agitated or depressed. Vampires became mainstream after Dracula was published. Since then, Count Dracula, Count Dracula's legendary persona has been a topic of many films, books, television shows, etc. Given the fascination people have with all things horror, 
Vampires, real or imagined, are likely to continue to inhabit the Earth for years to come. Sarah, Sarah says she cannot fathom anyone drinking blood. I can't either, but they do it. I they actually I, believe that it brings them strength and health, which is obviously far-fetched. But uh, people do do it. Know. You know, I just just got a message from Netflix that said you finished the haunting of Hill House. Did I didn't it? know that. Wow. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you for letting me know that. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you have not seen the haunting of Hill House, I recommend it. He recommends it. How many stars? Five. Five stars. Wow. Five stars. All right. Any movie or show that makes me jump gets a five star. Well, didn't Bambi do that to you? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah. 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 I am um, well played think? Netflix. Well played. And it was good. Hey, you know, uh, Frederick Ransom was another vampire. Yep. He was from Vermont. He died in uh, 1817 at the age of 20. His father was worried that he'd come back as a vampire and attack the family. So he had him exhumed and put a stake through his heart and then burnt it on a blacksmith's forge. Uh, Ransom was a Dartmouth College student, very well-to-do, very, uh, very smart very educated and uh, it, it was just it was unreal snow it really was good it really was <laughs> nothing you know I watch horror movies all the time and maybe occasionally something will make me jump nope this one <laughs> well played Netflix very well played five stars from that and Bambi and it's not the whole thing it it, it's it's a very very well done story, and when you least expect it is when it makes you jump. You know, usually, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, Sarah, and that is exactly where I lost my shit. The water bottle went flying across the room, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I um. The story itself was great. It was, it was a very, very good storyline. Um, and it just, you kept wondering, all right, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? And uh, it was good. I, I really enjoyed it. Okay, let's see. We're talking about people who played Dracula. Aha. All right, starting with Bela Lugosi, number one. Bela Lugosi. Christopher Lee, he was good. Christopher Lee was awesome. You had yeah. Christopher Lee together with Peter Cushing as Van Helsing. Man, those were those were the good ones. He actually played Dracula several times. Christopher Lee? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's in like six different movies. From 1958 all the way to 1976. Mm-hmm. Gary Oldman was a very good actor. Yep. He was in the one with um, Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder. Yep. That was a good one. That was on today. Yeah, that's right. Max Schreck. That's uh, an old uh, German actor. Yep. Back in the... Uh, he played in Nostra uh, Nosferatu. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> a tough in, one. Back in 1922. Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> that was a <laughs> comedy one, yeah. yeah. Dead and loving it. <laughs> Dracula, dead and loving it. Back in 1995. One of my favorite ones is with James Woods, and it was in the movie Vampire. Yup, yup, I do remember that. That was a good one. We got Jonathan Myers. In sure. 1977, he played uh, Dracula in a TV series. Back in, I'm sorry, that's in 2013, 2014. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that. No, no. The Monster Squad, played by Duncan Regar. He is coming to Scares That Care. Is he? Yeah, the cast the Monster Squad is coming. Why am I leaning over when I can move this up? I don't know. He's falling down on you. I know. 
Klaus Kinski. He played Nosferatu, the who vampire. Was, who was the one in the like late seventies, early eighties? It was a Dracula movie. John Carradine? No. Nope. Uh, we got Richard Roxborough played Van Helsing. Nope. Uh, God, it's a famous actor, too. And I can't remember his is name. Is it Klaus Kinski? No. He played in 1988 and 1979. No, uh, it was a movie. Richard, no, I already said that. Gerard Butler? Gerard. Dra- Dracula 2000. Oh, yeah, Dracula 2000. Yeah, he was good. Luke Evans, Dracula Untold. Nope, that was a pretty good movie. Lon Chaney, forgot about him. Lon Chaney Jr., son of Dracula, back in 1943. Dominic Purcell, Blade Trinity. Blade. Uh, Frank Langella. That's it. Yeah. Frank Dracula, Langella. 1979. Yep. He was good. Yeah. Yeah, he was very good. George Hamilton, a comedy, Love at First Bite. Yeah. So Jack Palance. <laughs> Dracula, 1974, he was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Keith Lee Castle, Young Dracula, TV series, 2006, 2014. I don't remember that one. I've got to say, I mean, other than Bela Lugosi, Bela Lugosi was the quintessential Dracula. He was good. Yep. After that, I have to go with Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee. Yeah. I gotta say, Christopher Lee was my favorite Dracula. Then, Frank Langella was good, and Jack Plants. They were both good. Oh, they were. They they absolutely were. Lon Chaney Jr. too. He was really good. See, I like Lon Chaney Jr. better as a Wolfman. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he played an excellent Wolfman. <laughs> mm-hmm. And last but not least. We have Thomas Kretschmann, Dracula 3D, 2012. Oh, uh, is that the one that took place in space? That was horrible. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. that I, I, I didn't see this one, yeah. Isn't it like Dracula 3000 or something? No, this was Dracula 3D. I think it was Dracula 3000. It took place in space. <laughs> That'd be one of the dumbest movies I've ever seen. Well, that was kind of like uh, Jason in space. But it? that was a good movie. Yeah, it was all right. It was kind of stupid. I talked but... to, you know, <laughs> last time I talked to Kane Hodder, played Jason, we were talking about that, and it, it, it was good. It, it was good. Well, it was better than the Dracula one in space. That's for yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. By far. Yep. By the way, Kane yes. Hodder will also be returning to scares that care. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah says Dracula in space hard pass. Yeah. Dracula 2000 was um was a pretty good movie. I did see that. Yeah. That was pretty good. That's the one with Gerard Butler. Mm. Um That was pretty good. Um What's your name? 7 of 9 was in it. Uh Think of her name right now. Uh, Danny Basterson from the 70s show. He was in it. Uh, that was a pretty good movie. That was a good one. That's so many vampire movies. I mean, remember, uh, what was the one that uh, Eddie Murphy played? Uh, can't, and and, and uh, mm, God, I can I can see it. Like, Angela Bassett was. Is that right? Yelp. They played. They were in it. I can't remember the name of it. If anybody can remember, please let me know. What's the Dracula movie? We, it actually wasn't even called Dracula. No. It was like Transylvania something, wasn't it? No, no. I, I know what you're talking about. It's with it Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy, <laughs> Angela Bassett. <laughs> <laughs> there was Transylvania 65,000 or something like that, or... Transylvania. Did you know that uh, Jim Carrey, his first movie was as a vampire? I didn't know that. Don't ask me the name of it because I don't remember. No, I don't remember. Um, 
God, that's going to drive me nuts now, too. We will look that up. I'll have to look up the other one, though. <laughs> right? Do we um, have anything exciting? By the way, tomorrow's Halloween. Happy Halloween. Yeah, keep it up. <laughs> He's laughing over there. I didn't even think he was there. Yeah, I was wondering where Keith went. One more day till Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Silver Shamrock. God, it's stuck in my head now. Yeah. I so said that's here, remember? The absolute, yeah, I remember. The <laughs> absolute worst Halloween movie. Out of the bunch. Hands down. Ah, got it. Halloween 3. Vampire in Brooklyn. That's it. With uh, Angela Bassett, yep, and Eddie Murphy. Back in 1995. That was actually a pretty good movie. But that was a comedy. Yeah, but it was pretty good. <laughs> Wrong Halloween movie. <laughs> All right, Sarah, take care. Thank you for uh, calling in. Bye, Great. Sarah. Uh, wow, I cannot find. I am doing nothing. Once bitten. Once Bitten was uh, Jim Carrey's first big movie. Oh, yeah, I do remember and, that. Movie. Uh, it was a vampire movie. That's right. His neighbor was a vampire. Do, 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 do. Right? And then his, his girlfriend, I think, or he had to save his girlfriend. No, you're thinking of um, Fright Night. Oh, okay. All right, I get them all because there's so many of them. Yeah. Yeah. Snow, I am working. Seems what I seem to do all the time now. I'll probably just terrorize the neighbors. Yeah, I'm sure I'll just I'll hang out and if I have a, a pass out candy until it's time to go to work, and then I'm thinking of dressing up for work. I'm not supposed to, but I have a cemetery near my house, so I usually go out on Halloween. True story. Why do I hear the regular Halloween theme song? That's our friend uh, Keith. I feel like Michael Myers is going to come up behind me in that freaking set of zombies. There he is. <laughs> Which one has that deep doot deep doot deep doot song? Halloween three. three. Which one's got that deep doot deep doot deep Halloween, Halloween. Keith's got that deep doot deep doot deep doot. What are you doing for Halloween, Sam? I would love to uh, take the kids out trick or treating, but I don't know if I'm going to have time. That's it. You should put the pumpkin Silver up on the screen there. Ooh, 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 Flashing ooh. pumpkin. Silver shamrock. <laughs> Snow is doing a ritual. Yep. Or is she dancing to the song? No, she's doing a, a ritual for Halloween. Should I start running now? <laughs> All right, will you turn that freaking Halloween song off? It drives me insane. That's why I send it to Jim every year. <laughs> worst worst friggin' movie I've ever seen. You know what? I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. When I watched Halloween 3, I expected Michael Myers to be in it, so I was highly, highly, highly disappointed. If it was a completely different movie, if it, they got rid of the Halloween name and just called it Season of the Witch, yeah, I'd probably that, like it. It'd probably be a good movie. That's true, because you did like, expect Michael Myers to be there Halloween, somewhere. By calling it Halloween, I was expecting Michael Myers. Well, the only thing, wasn't the little girl related to him in some way? What little girl? The little girl in, in Halloween no. 3. No. Because she killed somebody at the end. Yeah, no, it had nothing to do with Michael uh, Myers. I wasn't sure. Um... Um, 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 yeah, what's his name? Yeah, so that... that. Uh, the writer, uh, John... Who wrote Halloween? Carpenter? Thank you. Thank oh, you. my God. I couldn't think of it. Ever. Good thing I got John it. Carpenter really wanted to... He wanted to do something different. And that's what he did that was different. It is a classic. It is. They just took the word, the name Halloween away from it. It'd yeah, be great. it would have been. But that's, the season of the witch would have been think, good. That would have been. That's what I think really upset a lot of people is they're watching it. And, you know, you have part one, part two, Halloween three. Where's Michael Myers? Yeah, the expectation kind of blew it from. 
but yeah, it wasn't the worst movie. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes and uh, Attack of the Killer Donuts. Those were the two worst movies. Attack of the Killer Clowns. That one was better than uh, the other two. No, maybe. <laughs> All right, Gina's not here, so we're not going to have a Gina's corner. We're going to have a Jim's corner. Where's my corner? And we talked about <laughs> stuff earlier to start off the show about this ridiculous crap going on in this country. Over the last two weeks, I've seen multiple, multiple stories of people driving through the red lights on a school bus and hitting kids. Just a word to the wise. If I see you blowing through a freaking school bus in my town, you better hope the police get to you before I do. And if I show up with the fire department because you were in too much of a hurry and didn't stop for the red light, I, I, I don't even know what to say. It's not that hard of a concept. You see a school bus with the red lights on and the stop sign out? Frickin' stop. Stop. I'm tired of kids getting hit by idiots who are in too much of a hurry. It, it, that's the only thing I can think of. They're in too much of a frickin' hurry and they ignore the lights on the school bus. If I'm driving an emergency vehicle, I have to stop for a school bus. Whether I'm going to an emergency or not, I have to stop with the school bus until the school bus tells me it's safe to proceed and he waves me around. So who in the hell do you think you are or, or what makes you so special that you think you can blow through these red lights on a school bus? I, I mean, and like, like Snow just said, Indiana, three this morning, North Haven this morning, three kids, one killed, two injured. Stop. Just stop. Sorry, I got a little spot up there. That's okay. Got to voice it. Kids are, you know, kids are supposed to enjoy going to school. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be exciting. Not have to worry about some freaking douchebag flying through the school bus stop sign and hitting them. Yeah, there's enough to worry about schools nowadays without that happening. <clears throat> okay, I'm better. Not really. I'm still pissed, but... Take a pill. No, I ain't gonna help. I'll take one. <laughs> yeah, you take, yeah, take one for me. Guy behind me's got the right <clears throat> idea. <laughs> <laughs> He's been buffing your head there. <laughs> right? <laughs> I can feel them touching me back there. <laughs> One of these days, they're going to get through the damn window. <laughs> High five. <laughs> All right, everyone. That time has come. Now it's time to say goodbye to all our family. M-I-C-K-E-Y. M-O-U-S-E. -E. Okay. Um, I'm done. Again, <laughs> we want to... Uh, I want to send our prayers to the people in Pittsburgh. Absolutely. Uh, you're not alone. We are all thinking about you. God bless you all. Um, just, Bye, Snow. Just horrible. Snow, take care. Thanks for joining. Uh, once again, Crossing the Veil. If you guys have any questions for Snow, you can hit her up on Facebook. Go to their Crossing the Veil uh, Facebook page. Um, any questions for us, same thing. You can hit us up here. You can hit us up on our Arrowhead Paranormal page. We'll all get back to you as soon as we can. So everybody have a very safe and fun Halloween. And we will see you next Tuesday. God bless everyone. Love you guys. Take care.